the very first thing you learn as a Christian is you learn how to fear God. You learn to hate what God hates and love what God loves. And your mm-hmm. character starts to align with that. And as my character started to align, my level of fear started to decrease and my level of comprehension and courage started to increase. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so excited that you are with me this week and I am so honored to have back with me, Dr. Mark Hamby. If you heard my last interview with him, it's been quite some time since he's been on, but if you heard my last interview with him, I know that you were so beyond encouraged because we heard it from you. We heard from so many of you that it was one of your favorite episodes and you were really, um, you learned so much from him. You were able to just glean so much wisdom from Dr. Hamby. And so we brought him back and I recently listened to a seminar by Dr. Hamby and it was called Raise Them Up, Don't Crush Them Down. And it's about shepherding our children. And it was literally one of those seminars that I feel like was life-changing for me. Garrett listened to it as well. And we were both so strongly impacted by this particular seminar that I thought, you know what, we need to have him back on. We need to have him back on to talk specifically about how to shepherd our children well. And it's what we're all about here on the podcast. We are doing this family series, and we're so excited to kick off this family series with this episode, because here we talk about all things homeschooling, but homeschooling also encompasses the family, right? It's about marriage and parenting and discipling our kids and leading them to the cross and to the feet of Jesus. And so Uh, Dr. Hamby is here to help us along the way because we always need encouragement in this area. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. No parent should homeschool alone. You have a God-given calling to bring up your child to love God and to steward his creation. And BJU Press exists to help you be successful in that endeavor. Visit their website at bjupresshomeschool.com or call 1-800-845-845. 5731 to connect with an experienced homeschool consultant. Well, Dr. Hamby, welcome back. I am so just honored that you would take time. I know you are a very busy man, um, but thank you so much for coming back to encourage me and to encourage our audience. We are really, really excited to have you back. Great to be here, Yvette. Thank you. Uh, Well, so those who maybe didn't hear the last interview that we did with you, tell us in a nutshell who Dr. Hamby is, and and I know you've told me before, call you Mark, (laughs) but Mm -hmm. it feels weird to call you Mark for some reason. Um, So tell us who who Dr. Mark Hamby is uh, Mm -hmm. and a little bit about your ministry. Sure. Well, actually, there's four Dr. Mark Hambys, so you got to be careful which one you're going to go for. Um, (laughs) I actually actually, uh, had a bunch of people uh, telling me that they were excited that I was going to be speaking in Albany, New York. I'm like, I'm not speaking in Albany, New York. And so they went to hear... Dr. Mark Camby, and he was he's a Pentecostal preacher that speaks on prophecy. And so they went there. And then, and then, believe it or not, I ended up speaking in the same area, I think a year later. And um, we, we wanted to make sure there wasn't a mix-up. But I was there, and this lady comes up to me afterward, and she goes, my, my, my. She goes, you have shrunk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm five foot seven, and I think that the other one's about six foot two. <laughs> so, oh, that's so funny. Was she serious? Um, she seemed a little serious. Yeah. <laughs> You're a little surprised at my, at my topics. Um, and then, and then, uh, so, so I was saved in 1977. Debbie and I got married soon after that. And then we had three children. I was a principal of a Christian school. Um, and I saw that education wasn't kind of working the way I thought education should work. I, myself, had uh, gone through high school and then had gone through six years of college without reading a book. I couldn't, I could read, but I hated to read because my comprehension was real low. And so for me to read was very difficult because I couldn't understand what I was reading because my comprehension level was really low. My level of fear and anxiety was really high because my character was really low. And so when you got kids that have a low level of character, they generally have a low level of comprehension because they use all of their mental faculties to hide, you know, behind their, ins- hide their insecurities, especially kids that are in school. So, uh, so it wasn't until I came to know Jesus as my savior, senior year in college, get gloriously saved. And the first book I read was the Bible. And from mm-hmm. there, I couldn't put it down. I was literally, literally reading anywhere from two to six hours every night for the next two years. Wow. And so for that to be my very first book was 
extraordinary because I was learning God's truth for the very first time. In Proverbs chapter 2, it says that if you search for wisdom more than silver, more than hidden treasure, you'll understand the fear of the Lord. You'll find the knowledge of God and knowledge will become pleasant to your soul. And that's what happened to me. Um, you learn, the very first thing you learn as a Christian is you learn how to fear God. You learn to hate what God hates and love what God loves. And your mm -hmm. character starts to align with that. And as my character started to align, my level of fear started to decrease and my level of comprehension and courage started to increase. Now you're not afraid of failing anymore because now your character's growing and you recognize that you fear God more than you fear man. And so you don't mind failing you're willing to take more risk in learning because you want to learn. And especially when you're learning the knowledge of God. I mean, if you have, I don't know if parents get this, but if, if you prepare your children to search for wisdom more than hidden treasure and more than silver and gold, you will understand the fear of the Lord, find the knowledge of God and knowledge become pleasant to your, to your soul. But if you, if you think about this, if, if we really do have the opportunity to find the knowledge of God, you're raising your children to be able to do anything they want in this universe yeah. because the knowledge of God is what makes everything work. And so why would we want our kids to learn about theories in a secular college or using textbooks that don't have the very words of God, the mind of God, you know, insight and discernment. That's what, that's what our kids need. And if our kids will get that, they can do anything. So, you know, I have, you know, three master's degrees, a doctorate, but, all my education can be put in a thimble compared to what I've learned from the Word of God. You know, the Word of God is what daily allows me to start Lamplighter Publishing and start Lamplighter, you know, Lamplighter Theater and the Master's Guild Collegiate Program. All of the things that we've done here at Lamplighter have been primarily because of the insights of the Word of God. And so who's Mark Hamby? Saved in 1977, started off as a Christian school administrator, um, Christian, pastor of Christian education, then went to college uh, to get a master's degree in administration, then a master's degree in divinity, a master's degree in theology. Then um, during that time, I started Lampeter Ministries, which was basically helping people to find great stories that would help build their Christ-like character because I didn't read when I was growing up for the first 22 years. So now I'm sharing books that I think are the best books that have ever been printed in the world, books from Germany, France, Italy, England, early America, you know, books that hold you on the edge of your seat. We've got 275 of those books, and they are for children of all ages. Uh, the best and greatest books in the world, by the way, are both juvenile and adult. Um, you know, everyone should know that. And then, you know, families read these books together, and we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of letters from parents saying their lives will never be the same. One man in, named George down in uh, uh, Poughkeepsie, New York, he said that um, after he heard one of our seminars on, uh, on life transforming literature, he got rid of his TV. He's now reading Lampeter books at night and all the kids in the neighborhood come to hear him read wow. on a Friday night. You know, isn't that the coolest thing? That is so cool. Yeah. So we, yeah. so we started Lampeter publishing and uh, we weren't intending to do it. It's just that I wanted people to read these books. You know, it's like, you yeah. got to read it. In fact, you've had, I was at a seminar and I was holding up the book basket of flowers. And I said, Folks, this is the best book I've ever read in my life. And I said, but there's no other book like it in print. And this, some lady yells out, print it yourself, you know? And I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> a novel idea. I never really thought of that. And so we printed it in the first year. We sold 2,000 copies. And then we found another book and another book, and another book. Now we got 275 of these books. And, and uh, so Lampfighter Publishing started. Then we realized that only 5% of the entire North American continent's reading nonfiction or anything of value. That was a study done in the 1980s. And, um, and then I thought, well, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We've got to take these stories that we have and put them in audio dramas. Yeah. Then God did the most miraculous thing. A lot of the guys that were working at the Adventures and Odyssey, and uh, they started helping us produce these into dramas. And now we've got 33 dramas heard in by a million listeners every week in 34 countries. And only God. And then we thought, yeah. we've got to train the next generation. So we started this thing called the Summer Guild, where we bring in, you know, all of these master teachers in all of these art areas. And then we, they produce something throughout the week. And then we thought, you know what? We've got to make this a year-long program, maybe a two-year-long program. 
And we started a collegiate program called the Master's Guild. And we bring all of these master teachers from around the world to teach in theology and script writing, voice acting, sound design, music engineering, landscaping, culinary, you name it, we're doing it here. And Yvette, I am living a dream in such a way that I feel like I'm in heaven most of the time. That's how amazing yeah. it is here. So that's who Mark Amby is. That's so cool. Isn't it neat when the Lord allows us to do the things that he's created us to do and we get to do that for a living? I mean, it's just so cool. <laughs> Even being a mom, like I, I, you know, I love being a mom and a wife and I just stand in awe of the fact that the Lord allows me to do this mm -hmm. as my career. You know, I mean, the podcast is fun and I love doing this podcast, but this is just my side hustle. <laughs> my real gig is taking care of my family and I absolutely love it. And Garrett, alike. I mean, he, God has gifted him in the area of filmmaking and, you know, pos podcast producing and all of these things. And so it, it, it is so cool to be able to use what the Lord has given us to impact his kingdom. I mean, there's just no better thing than being able to do that. Do that. And then, you know, it doesn't seem like work. It's just no. having fun. And, I haven't worked uh, so. in 42 years. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Well, let's talk today about shepherding our kids. And like I mentioned when we very first um, started I listened to a seminar that you gave quite some time ago. I mean, I think it was probably several years ago that you gave the seminar and it's called Raise Them Up, Don't Crush Them Down. And this was recommended to me by Jacqueline Head. And she was a guest recently on our podcast and we were talking about this. And she said that she had gone to your seminar, uh, this particular seminar, and it had literally changed her life. And God had just worked in an amazing way through her heart and her husband's heart. And it changed the trajectory of their family. And so I said, well, I've got to listen to this seminar. And so I listened to it and I was so blown away by just the testimony that you gave of what the Lord did through you and through your family, through some really hard circumstances. And so what I thought was so amazing is that you were once an actual shepherd, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, like, it's so funny thinking about that because knowing what you do now, I can't quite imagine you out, you know, on the field, <laughs> but you were a shepherd. And so you, in this seminar, which we will link to, of course, in the show notes, in this seminar, you talk about how parenting is shepherding. And so I would love for you to really take us down that road of how we tie together parenting and shepherding. You know, um, and before I do, let me just address to those that have seen the cast on my arm. I was down in Kentucky <laughs> um, a few weeks ago, about a month ago, actually. I was speaking. I did actually speak on this subject um, there, and there was all these like 10 to 14-year-old kids there. There must have been like 30, 40 kids, and they were all riding this thing called a ripstick. <laughs> and, it, you know, if you know me, then... You know, I try everything. I'm a risk taker and you know, I'm 66 years old, and but I think I'm 26. And so I, I had the kids start teaching me, you know, and it took me several hours to get it, but I got it. I was riding this thing. It was really amazing, but I got a little too confident. You can't put your weight on the back of this thing. And this thing, this thing flew out from underneath me oh, and, and I felt my body kind of like in midair and just kind of like going down and my arm went behind me apparently and broke my wrist in three places. And it's been, it's been a rough road ever since, but, Yikes. but having said that, you know, um, I was always too busy to do anything like that with my own kids. I was always, you know, I was administrator of a school. I was, uh, even when we were ra raising the sheep on the farm, I was in seminary full-time taking 21 credit hours. I was the administrator of a, of a Christian school at that same time. And I had well, I was the caretaker on this very large farm and I was raising 22 horses and 70 sheep and, wow. and cutting, you know, around 25,000 bales of hay and, um, and taking care of several miles of roads. And so I was extremely busy. I was burning myself out, I had three children, and uh, Debbie was doing most of the homeschooling. I was trying to make ends meet and trying to survive by following what I thought was my calling, you know, and going to seminary. And, you know, it was, it was hard. I was, I was probably sleeping on an average of four to five hours a night, maybe. Wow. 
Uh, but but you know, when I was down in Kentucky four weeks ago, I, I was playing with the kids. You know, I was just loving it. You know, and however, I broke my wrist in doing it. <laughs> So I, I read Philip Keller's book on Psalm 23, and I was just intrigued with all of the many lessons that he was teaching. And I, and my kids and I, they were they were young. They were six years and five years and younger. And we were helping a shepherd out at that time. And uh, amazing lessons he talked. He taught us about the cast sheep in Deut- from Deuteronomy 32. You know, a cast sheep is a sheep that um, gorges itself. It can't. It's not having lambs anymore. And um, and it gets fatter and fatter and fatter, and it's not producing fruit anymore. And so sheep will lie down by tucking its legs underneath it so that when they stand up, they just put their legs back out and they stand up. They got short, squatty feet and legs. And um, if if a sheep gets too fat, when it lays down, it, it'll lay down with its feet to its side. And when it does that, it won't be able to get back up because they're too fat. And um, And when that happens, the poisons from its intestinal tract will literally go into his bloodstream, into his brain, it'll die. And oh, wow. so this this shepherd was teaching us about a cast sheep and told us that if we ever saw one of his sheep like that, to come and get him immediately. And the very next Saturday, wouldn't you know it, we saw a cast sheep. And it was really amazing to watch him upright the sheep and swirl around with it until it, until it got its equilibrium back and saved its life. Um, and so we were fascinated with with sheep. And so while I was in seminary and had an opportunity to be a caretaker on this very large estate, we bought some sheep, but um, it it's different having your own sheep than going over to someone's house on a Saturday afternoon and spending an hour and then leaving. So so there was a friend we found down in Pennsylvania while we were in seminary and, and uh, I would go down there and help him with his sheep. And one day I called him up and I said, John, I said, you know, I'd like to buy three of your sheep. I'd like to get two ewes and a lamb. He goes, Mark, I'm really sorry. He goes, I, I brought all my sheep to, to auction last week. He goes, but I kept my favorite three. He goes, you know what? You've been so good to me. He goes, I'm going to come up and bring them up to your house, up to the farm there, and I'm going to give them to you for free. And this is before I realized nothing's free in life. <laughs> so he came up, dropped them off. And, uh, and he didn't even stay to say hello, say goodbye or hello. He just took off, you know, I, that was one. I didn't feel like something's He's wrong. like sucker. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so what happened immediately was I, I named them, you know, the first, the, the two U's one, one had a brown eye, one had a blue eye. The other one had two blue eyes. And I named him Mary and Martha. And then the, uh, the Ram, he was kind of ugly. He uh, he had horns and a uh, long beard and and uh, he looked at me and and most people think I would have named him Lazarus but I I named him Rambo <laughs> because he he got up on his hind legs and started chasing me like a person and I've never seen an animal on hind legs like that chasing somebody and he was running fast and I'm running for my life and as I'm running for my life my wife and my kids are on the porch and they're cheering and not for me. <laughs> And, uh, and they're, they're like, the ram's going to beat you, daddy, you know, and, and I'm running. I, I grab a metal garbage can lid to protect myself. This thing is now airborne coming at me. It's a 200-pound projectile. And oh he, he bends the metal garbage can in half. And uh, I started beating him over the head with it. And as I did, you know, he just came right back at me. He would not leave me alone. And I learned later that when you beat a ram over the head with anything, it's like a mating challenge. So, so <laughs> this went from bad to worse, you know. I, I literally couldn't go anywhere on the farm without this monster trying to kill me. I mean, everywhere I went, he would just lunge at me. And so I had to carry two bales of hay behind my back. I put a bell around his neck so that I would always know where he was. And, and one day, one of the bells of the string on the bale of hay fell off and all the, the hay just fell to the ground. And I, I looked to the right, looked to the left, and I thought, okay, I'm safe. There, he's not around. I didn't hear the bell. And he was directly behind me, I, and he was out of my um, my peripheral sight, and I didn't see him. And he was just waiting for me. And when I, when I went to bend over, he hit me in the back with his horns, and uh, I thought he broke my back. And I, I'm laying on the ground. The next thing I know, he's standing over me. And he's literally going to try to kill me. And I, I rolled over and he hits the ground with his horns. And next thing I know, I've lost all sense of humanity. 
I'm, I've got this size 38 neck with, in a full Nelson, and I'm going to try to strangle him. My wife's <laughs> looking at me on the back porch going, what are you doing to that poor animal? What do you think I'm doing? I'm trying to kill him. He tried to kill me first. <laughs> and, uh, and so this, this was a terrible beginning of a shepherd because we went from three to 70 sheep in less than, you ready for this? In, in less than 18 months. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they were coming out of, of sheep. Every, they were coming out of everywhere. They were like, you know, from triplets to quadruplets to quintuplets to sextuplets. They were, I mean, they multiplied so fast and wow. And uh, and now it's out of hand, and I can't keep up with all of this. I got, like I said, twenty-two horses, seventy sheep, full-time seminary, full-time job, and I've got the sheep in the farm and the grass and the hay and all the stuff, and I've got three kids, and all I could do was enlist my kids at how old now they're seven five and three and okay. they're helping me to do everything on the farm you know jonathan jonathan i need you over here mock the stall jonathan get me that jennifer you know and all they're doing is i'm trying to survive and not realizing that i'm enlisting my kids to help me survive because i think this is the kind of life that they want you know i think that yeah. my kids need to live on a farm to learn responsibility and to learn nature, no television, no movies. They're going to learn, you know, how to enjoy life without all of those things. And so yeah. one of the things I didn't realize of that is that you can take your kids out of the world all you want, but Cain still would have killed Abel. He didn't have any media influence and any bad friends, and, yeah. but it still killed his brother but just because of the sinful nature of mankind. Yeah. And here I was bringing my family into this isolation in these, you know, protective barriers. But um, what was missing is I wasn't able to reach their heart. There is so much more to this story. I know because I've heard it and it's amazing, but we're out of time. Um, so we're going to come back on Wednesday and we're going to keep talking about this. And you guys just hang with this story because it's so good and so powerful. You, um, you're going to be convicted like I was. I know that you are because the Lord has done amazing things through Dr. Hamby um, to just bring him to his knees. And you're going to hear about that uh, later this week. So um, if you've not yet watched Schoolhouse Rocked, go to our website, schoolhouserocked.com. You can watch the movie there. Invite your friends, invite your family, have a party and watch this movie so that you will be encouraged and know why we do this homeschooling thing, right? Again, it's all about discipleship. And that's really what the core of the movie is about and, and how it ties up at the very end of the movie. It's all about taking our kids to the cross. So thank you so much for listening. We will be back with you on Wednesday. Until then, have a great afternoon. See you then. Bye. Education is discipleship. And this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children.